I do want to bring in now Ryan Payne. He's the president of Payne Capital Management. Uh, Ryan, it's good to have you with me. You've been a longtime bull of this market. We haven't talked, though, since the coronavirus outbreak hit the U.S. And so are you buying, selling or holding right now? Um, no, we're absolutely buying. And I think, uh, you know, from the perspective of uh, when is this thing going to recover and things like that, I think that's that's very unknowable here. So I'll put that caveat out there. And I think we could see more volatility moving forward here because bottoms are typically a process. So if we're at the bottom now or not, I would say we're not qu quite sure about that. But look, we're long term investors, um, long term, just like my view when I was on your show back in January or February, um, we were very bullish on the market at that point, of course. We couldn't foresee what was going to happen with this coronavirus. But I think as a longer term investor still at some point, like you just mentioned, Bernanke was saying the economy is going to get back online. And when it does, you know, the market's going to start to reprice upward. So as a long term investor, you got to take advantage of these bear markets. This is my third one. You really create your wealth in these bear markets if you start to allocate shares or pick up shares now, as opposed to when things are just at the highs. OK, so what are you buying? Um, we're really buying the entire market globally. Uh, we're buying domestically right now. We use indexes because my one belief here is, first off, buying just individual stocks right now, I think, is a really risky game to play because you just don't know what companies are going to really survive this. Um, and the ones they do are going to survive it in a big way. And that's why I like exchange traded funds, because they're capitalization weighted. So whoever really comes out of this shining, um, anything from the financial sector, which I think looks really good here, especially with longer term interest rates going up, those net interest margins is where they make a lot of their money. Um, but buying the whole field of those banking stocks makes more sense than just picking out the ones you think are going to be the winners. Um, and owning the exchange traded fund will let you know that because the capitalization weight, it means the cream will rise to the top. You know, the best companies will be the top of those indexes when the dust settles and the market finally goes up again. So are you trying to add value and growth at this time or are you focused focusing mostly on value and defensive stocks for your portfolio? No, we don't try to predict ahead of time. Um, I think that's kind of a fool's earn here. My crystal ball broke like 20 years ago, Kristen, when I got into the business. So we're adding across the board and the things that get hit the hardest, we'll add more money to because we keep kind of a style neutral approach with our investments. So um, right now, if you look at it specifically, I mean, value has obviously gotten hit harder because you have financials in there, you have the energy sector. So invariably, we are putting more money there, but that's just because those things are down more. Same thing with the international markets. And one thing I'd point out right now that no one's talking about is the dollar is actually starting to weaken. And that's very, very good for international exposure. So I really think right now the smart move here is to get diversified globally. Uh, don't just buy the things that were the winners before the correction, because typically when you have volatility like this, the leadership tends to change. Like back when we had the financial crisis, value stocks went out of favor. And when we just had this big bull market and growth, that leadership could change once we get out of this thing and the economy actually recovers. OK, so other than the dollar, I mean, what are the major market indicators, Ryan, that you're following and trying to make sense of this market, which a lot of people are having a hard time doing, understandably so? Yeah, no, I think the dollar is definitely a good signal about what's going on with overseas, because you know, the thing I think about, too, is we just unleashed this huge stimulus package. You know, our balance sheet as the U.S. is not going to look great coming out of this thing. Um, another thing you can look at, too, which is more of a leading indicator are things like copper. Copper really is indicative of manufacturing globally. So if copper starts to bottom here, um, that's usually a sign that global manufacturing should start to pick up as well. So that's one of the indicators I like to look at just to get a sense on what's going on. Because the other thing you got to remember now is China is actually getting back online right now. Um, so I think, you know, you got to remember, too, different countries, different cities are going to be on, on a different curve right now. So all that pent up demand is not going to all come back at once. It's probably going to come back in. It really, it's going to come back in fits and starts and other places are going to recover quicker than others, just depending on where you are in that U curve or, or that flattening of the curve. rather. OK, so you uh, you say people should get diversified, certainly around the world when we were. Uh, in the process of heading down so swiftly, right? I mean, the, the swiftest decline probably that we've ever seen in history, at least in our lifetime. Was there anything that you were selling? No, never sell into a panic. Um, and repeat, never sell out of a panic. Um, one thing I've learned again with my third bear market is when the market sells off like that, it's not a market anymore. Um, you have a lot of leverage being unwinded. Um, you have a lot of people that were leveraged, you know, long in the market that were covering short positions, and then you just, you just get the sheer panic. Um, and the way I look at it is, I mean, if you have a diversified portfolio, 
it's paying a lot of nice cash flow. It's like if you had rental properties that were paying really nice cash flow and you knew the market was bad, you wouldn't rush to put all your rental properties on the market and sell them. Um, so that's the same thing right now. You've got a lot of great blue chip companies um, that I loved in the beginning of the year and I was very bullish. Um, there are still going to be great companies when this thing ends and thinking out the next three to five years, 10 years, you know, there's going to be a lot of companies that are going to continue to grow and profits are going to be a lot higher than they were even at the beginning of the year right now. So you don't want to just sell those companies yeah, you know, when the market is Ryan, just being brought down. I want to jump in just quickly before we have to let you go. Um, so I've I've been hearing that there is some expectation that perhaps we get out of this recession uh, by the fourth quarter once the holiday season rolls around. So I know you have to take a, a stance, right, on where you see the market ending. And you were a big bull uh, before this outbreak happened that very few of us really saw coming. And so at the end of the year, where do we end? Higher, the same, or lower from where we are now? Um, I don't. That, that's a really tough question. Remember, analysts make fortune tellers look good. You're seeing a lot of economists and analysts right now tell you that they know, you know, third quarter is going to be the bottom, fourth quarter is going to be great. That I don't know, but I will say this. This is one thing to remember. Another reason why you do want to be buying stocks now for the long term is the market's going to rebound a lot quicker uh, than the news is. You know, the news could be getting worse, but the market's already recovering. The market's a discounting mechanism. You know, it's been pricing this information in a lot quicker. Uh, then the data is coming in. So I, I do think we'll probably bottom way before the end of the year. Uh, hence, I think you should be buying in here, dollar cost averaging in here. Um, but you know, don't get deterred just because the news is becoming worse and worse and worse. You know, market's going to be ahead of that. So you know, I don't know if it's the fourth quarter. I don't know if it's the third quarter. But you're going to see a lot of big projections right now by economists at the big banks. And let's face it, they never get it right. They didn't predict this in the beginning of the year um, when the World Health Organization was calling for a international disaster back in, in February. No one said GDP was going to be down as big as in the third quarter. So they're not going to get it right now, too. Just All saying. right, Ryan, we got to leave it there. Um, it's good to have you with us. Ryan Payne, he's the president of Payne Capital Management. Thanks again.